what I enjoy about doing fashion is that I like to create some kind of fantasy within a, a story. I'd say for fashion, it, you really need some kind of something to elevate it. Sometimes it's on the clothes, you know, sometimes it's in the girls, and sometimes you gotta throw a bit of magic. It's like a puzzle piece, you know, putting it together because you're not always working with the concept that you want. So it's a lot of it is improvising with what you have. This is influenced by this Czech photographer, Drichtel, that had some very uh, surreal photographs and, and that was a point of reference for me. So I, I, I do use a lot of, of effects and color. I started doing a lot of like Polaroids because of this certain palette that it had. The coloration and, and how it's going to look and where the, how the colors are going to work. And sometimes it's just, it's visceral, it's what my gut feels, but you know, so it's a lot of experimentation. Time commissioned a story where they wanted to wanted me to photograph the um, the Oscar nominated actors for 2012. It's my first time shooting for Time, so of course I jump at the opportunity. And well, they that's were... a big first yeah, job. Yeah, it's it? a big story. That's a goof, isn't he? Yeah, you know, and, that, and the thing about George is, was, you know, I mean, it was my first time meeting him, and, you know, and, and the whole time we were photographing, he was just telling jokes. And so for me, it was a joy working with him because he knew how to express. I have to say, with, with this picture of George, I, I thought this was the perfect expression that I had captured George for that, that time, and I really wanted for the magazine to run it, but they were hesitant to run that one because it was just a little too amusing. And I was like, but that's how he was, and I wanted... So so the one that I actually ran in, in the story was just one that was just a little bit less... We know about the, the, the editing floor <laughs> way, way too way too well. Yeah. If you're, you, know, you might be on the floor in, in your entirety. So this... Uh, Leads us to the segment called Fishbowl. I get to ask the first question. What photo do you wish you had taken? I would like to have taken the picture. You know that one? And it's like they're at a party and there's Sophia Loren and she's going like this. And she's checking out Jane Mansfield's copious bosoms. I know that picture. I love it's that a, picture. And I, I think if I'd taken it, I would have been there. That would have been a good, looks like it was a good night. And uh, I love actually being in situations like that where girls are checking each other out. But also when you're in one of those, you know, when you're in a booth and they come and snap you, in the moment when they're taking a picture of someone else and they're posing, you see them in a totally different way. Here, you ask the question now. You get to, you get to do the fishbowl aspect. How do you feel about image-based web business like Pinterest, Flickr and Instagram, Sebastian? I, I find myself not involved because I don't feel like I have anything to share. There's a personal side to it which I value that I want to keep private. I find, I'm quite intrigued by, like I started to do Instagram recently and I really like people that I know and I see what they're doing and also even people I don't know but whose aesthetic I like and I have a little, I have, you know, maybe 20 people and I, I quite like just that, like getting postcards from people. Yeah. But what I find daunting is that first there was Twitter and everyone's going, you've got to go on Twitter. I was like, oh. And I did, and I really like it. Now this one, I really like it. And all these other ones, I think you, I, I'm exhausted by, right. again, the choices yeah. that are there. I like being able to communicate with people. I like getting the news that way. I like seeing images that way. But I don't, at a certain point, I mean, certain people's aesthetic and taste, I'm really fascinated by. A lot of people, I'm not. A lot of people aren't that interesting. Do you know what I mean? That's, I, I know that sounds mean, but it's true. And so and it it's, takes a lot of time to figure out those who are. Exactly, it does. I like to know what other people are doing, but I, you know, I snoop around, but... On your scooter. He's snooping scooterist. 
So ask another question. I quite like asking questions. <laughs> what are the best and worst things about the proliferation of camera phones? Mm. I always wondered, you know, with all those everybody having camera phones, where are all those pictures of UFOs? I know, or the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. I know. It kind of ruins myth. It's almost like um, an existential thing that you don't really exist. The moment hasn't really happened unless you have a photograph to prove it. I think people just miss so much stuff around them. I think it's what you say. There's really, there's no longer this, this moment of allowing something to soak into your, to your consciousness. Okay, last question. Ready? Who's the most photogenic person of all time? I would say Marilyn Monroe, just because her image is so powerful and so potent. And also, I think photogenic to me means you look better in a photograph than you do in real life. I love when people say to me, you're so photogenic, and I go, thank fuck. And I think the same is true of her, actually, that she was obviously a beautiful woman, but something happens through a lens that makes her even more beautiful. I think it's, it's, there aren't very many people like that. But don't you think photogenic is a slightly double-edged sword? Because it means you have great pictures, but you're kind of disappointed in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you look so much bigger and... Yeah, I movies. get that all the time. Oh, you're so much uh, shorter than you seem on television. <laughs> we are uh, putting a wrap, I guess, on our show today. And uh, I wanted to, to thank Alan Cumming for, for today, for being here. Uh, any day now is the new movie coming out. When, does, when do we expect that? Uh, December the 14th. December the 14th, okay. And Sebastian Kim, new baby. Ooh. Lots of great work on the, on the horizon. Well, this has been great. Thank you again for coming. Hi, I'm Mark Seliger, and we're here on Capture with Alan Cumming and with Sebastian Kim. Click the subscriber button below if you don't want to miss the new episode of The Next Shows. It's right here. It's only on reserve and only on YouTube. Click now. Do click, it. Click. 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 Or else.